We got this. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chai Together for the second time today. You are tuning in to your cup of courage, hope, and imagination with me, your host and founder, Pratiba Day. Hey, <laughs> with our friend, Mr. Menser Hudich. Is that right? Hey. That's right. Hey, with you're American the, accent. You're professional already. <laughs> So Menser is a great friend of mine, and he's very supportive as well. Over the months that I met him, and I met him through TIR, our Thinking Into Results with Mr. John Tellerico. And I'm going to show you a little bit about Menser with you. So Menser is an immigrant who came to the U.S. as a child over the years. He attended schooling and became successful with his master's degree. He currently works at a world-leading agriculture company, and he's also in the process of becoming a global motivational speaker. By motivating and inspiring others through his life story. So let's all welcome Menser today. <laughs> Thank How you, you for having me. Yeah, finally. We get to chai together with our mugs. <laughs> yes, one I've journey at a time. Been a busy, busy boy. <laughs> I like your background. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, cool. uh, the background, um, when I started this little journey, I, I have one of my friends that's uh, – as a sign company, I was bouncing ideas and he goes, Hey, I can, I can make something for you and mm. put a banner together for me. Very nice of him. Did he create the, the design, the logo? Um, the logo, I oh. think I've got, I think somebody else created the logo and then he just mm -hmm. uh, used this digital printing and, mm. and put it on a banner for me. So what is your logo? Uh, simply motivated. Ooh. Ooh, okay, yeah. this is it right here. This is the logo. This is the logo. Okay, cool. This is what it is. Yep. Words, Words and, change a life. and thoughts can change a life. Wow. I really like that. And I also want to share that Menser spoke on Mr. Les Brown's Power Voice Summit. And it's incredible because he did not use any notes and he spoke from the heart. And I could not tell. <laughs> no practice whatsoever. So your story is very deep and very moving and, you know, equivalent to the Holocaust because it was a genocide, right? Correct. And it's a heavy topic. It's a trigger topic. Um, thank you for those tuning in. And if anyone's uncomfortable with uh, heavy stories such as this, just don't watch right now and you can replay it later. And I <laughs> hope you're having a great day. Hi, Miss Shauna. I hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> so, all right. Do you want to tell us a bit about you and that story? Sure. Yeah. Um, the yeah. Brown Summit, you know, um, didn't really prepare for it, but I knew it was within me because I, I lived it. Right. And it's one of the mm -hmm. things that, you know, as a motivational speaker, I wanted it to have something and share something that was me. Right. We all have a story to, to tell. And, you know, my childhood one is um, different than maybe most. And that mm -hmm. can be good or bad. And just what you take away from it. And it's just something that's ingrained, ingrained in me and, you know, it's part of me and just, you know, coming from a place that, you know, my home, my birthplace that I'll never forget being taken away from me by war and, you know, coming to the United States with my family and rebuilding a life here. It's, uh, it's been quite a journey, been quite a journey. One journey at a time. <laughs> yeah. One journey at a time. So do you have any traumas from that time that you still have like flashbacks like ptsd about from that period flashbacks i i, I don't know if they're flashbacks mm -hmm. I, mean, I still have um vivid memories about it mm -hmm. you know um I, I remember all the screams and things that i've seen that i probably shouldn't have seen but when you're a kid and running all over when you have bombs dropping you wow you tend to see things that um i nobody should see right but I remember that stuff. And in, in one token, it's good that I remember it. It's good that I know where I've come from, what I've been through, mm -hmm. because it kind of makes everything else easy. Um, and when I came to the United States, that's just one of those things. The opportunity here is above mm -hmm. and beyond what it what it what it's like home, just because, you know, they don't have the technology, the education and and the abilities, capabilities, you know, to get loans and to go to school and stuff like that. So um, one journey ended back there and another one started here. And how old were you then? I was about five years old when the war started. Wow. And, yeah. um, we moved to Croatia and I was, I, I was there for about mm -hmm. a year and a half. Um, and, and then we transitioned over here. Yeah. So you know, I, I was in India at five too. And regarding the memories, I definitely do remember during that age. But one thing I want to say is after living in Thailand in 2019, I realized, wow, people don't have the opportunities, the chance 
to do the things we do here. A lot of people may say, I hate America or I hate Trump or all these you know, things. However, it's like you haven't lived in another place. And if you have, I mean, you know, that's on you. But the fact that other people would kill, like literally people kill for this opportunity, even you can see in movies and documentaries to come here because of the schooling and people who live here in the States don't want to go to, let them, yeah, school's not every for everyone, but don't even want to further themselves or advance themselves and just sit on the couch, Netflix and chill or whatever they may do, or they're just comfortable. And it's like other people bust their butt, you know, to come here and do whatever job they have to do to provide for their family. Like, what's your thought on that? I think every school um, should have some kind of program where kids yeah. get to travel abroad, right? Wake up and <laughs> we're so used to living our, our daily lives and, you know, building those mental programs, as you know about that we mm -hmm. learned in our, in our group, but it's go out there and live life and see how people, there are people out there that have no opportunity. That's it's, right. they, it's just, they don't have it. They don't have the technology. Nope. They don't have um, the potential. They don't have the resources. And there's, there's places out there that still don't have running water. Nope. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we have all of this here and you see a lot of kids, you know, they'll spend five, 10 hours a day playing video games. It's like, you're not producing a result that you want out of life and your life's taken away. It's not just the time. So um, different opportunities will def definitely open your mind up to, to different things that are going on in the world. And I think people need more of that, right? Mm -hmm. the world, so. I believe it should be possibly a mandatory requirement for students here to have the opportunity to go take a trip abroad to see how other people live in the slums and rural. Because I lived in rural Thailand, but I seen a documentary, uh, especially when people do Peace Corps, that's a great um, initiative. Uh -huh. And it also requires a bachelor degree and like those qualifications though. But I seen a documentary about rural India, India where they don't have clean water. They're wearing the same clothes. Their, their feces and all that, you know, um, just to be very direct, are in the same area as they live in. They have not even a bed, but like a cot to share mm -hmm. and things like that. And it's like, it's the system is set up that way for them. They, they don't have the opportunity. They're locked in. They don't even have the education. They just embrace it for them getting fresh water is their purpose like that's enough for their life they mm -hmm. don't the, the one lady says she doesn't want anything more if they can just fix the water <laughs> you know it's like oh thanks yeah it's it's uh it's something so small but for them that can be their purpose and for us here it's like we're so like Sadhguru says caught up in our goals and dreams and big house car and all these things and it's really not everyone serves that higher purpose on that level, like some people, they're just okay with, let me just have a place to sleep. And that's their role in life. And you have to be okay with that. Because if we were all up here doing the same thing, there is no balance and there's no, you know, gap in those opportunities and all. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know who this is, thank you. Correct, and I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that um, I've always been humbled. Um, I'm not better than anybody, and my friends would use mm -hmm. the thing, you know, um, don't think you're better than anybody. It's like I'm not better than anybody. I'm just trying to do the best for me. Mm -hmm. And their scope and my scope wasn't the same. They were thinking about other people, and I was thinking about me because I have my mm -hmm. my parents. You know, it's like I have wow. a responsibility here. And if if you don't think about yourself, and you know, you don't aim for what you want, and you don't go after it don't expect or think that it's mm. going to come to you and you know and you know what it's like you gotta you gotta work hard and you gotta stay committed and dedicated and keep going after what it is that you want i want to ask about your parents mm -hmm. um yeah tell us more about your dad are you able to share that what you're sure so, um yeah. my dad always worked construction he's one of the mm -hmm. hardest working people i've known um, you know, always work construction. Uh, mom would wake up at three o'clock in the morning because she worked bakery at a, at a grocery store. So of course she'd have yeah. to wake up early and, you know, um, construction paid well, but he was never home and it's hard labor job. So that's, that's taxing, you know, and just last year he actually, um, had a stroke. Um, luckily he, he, he recovered, um, not fully, but he, he's way better than he was before. And, you know, yeah. over the years, I always wanted it to, you know, I wanted it to buy them the house, the cars. And yeah. you know, <laughs> there, there's people that hate on that too. They're like, Hey, that's materialistic stuff. And 
I'm like, hey, that's perfectly fine. But if I didn't have a good heart and if I didn't work hard, it didn't just drop out of the sky. So, uh, <laughs> but, you know, but as as grown up with four older sisters, wow. I always wanted it to to make sure that I was able to take care of my parents. I knew my mm-hmm. sisters would get married. They'd move out, have their family. But it's like I'm stuck with mom and dad when I was a kid. It's like they're stuck with me when they get older. And, you know, I just uh, I can't let them go. I'm still a baby inside. Oh. <laughs> that is too funny. You got the face. So Thank I you. think it's incredible. And I know a lot of immigrants, me being coming here as an immigrant myself and becoming a citizen in 2008. So I was still in elementary school that when I took the oath and all, I didn't even know. I knew it was important and I knew my parents were studying for the test and things. And uh, I'm blessed enough that I was a child so I don't have to take the test. But the fact that to go through all those steps and I didn't even know how serious an oath is and those kind of things. And, you know, I, so like for me, I realized what the value of a US citizenship was with the part of my story where, you know, where when I was abroad, for those of you who don't know, uh, the gentleman was scamming me for a US visa because there's opportunities here. Mm-hmm. And going through that and going through my loss, uh, which I won't get into, led to, you know, me realizing, wow, like this is my country, mm-hmm. you know? So w- what are your goals for Bosnia now? So right now, building um, my company Simply Motivated, mm-hmm. I wanted it to go and I am going global. And one of those things yeah. is they don't have motivational mm-hmm. speakers. They don't believe in it. The mindset mm-hmm. of um, the older generation, it it cuts things off real quick. Mm-hmm. And I'm one of those that, you know, between education and developing mm-hmm. myself and, you know, seeing the next generation coming up here that grew up here, there's so much potential in the world. And it's like, we're, we're building big businesses here. We're building big companies here. People are changing mm-hmm. their lives. I'm like, why don't we use the resources and take it back home, take that knowledge, take that experience and start building that, right? The war has occurred about 25, between 25, 30 wow. years ago. Wow. In the early 90s. And things are still, you know, slowly, gradually getting built, but they don't have the study jobs like, like you know, wow. like we have here in the United States. And it's like, <laughs> A lot of people are moving out elsewhere so they can get jobs. And it's like, hey, if there's enough of us and we work hard and now that we have all this, you know, knowledge, the experience, the hard work ethic, the ability to get loans, raise money, whatever it is, we can start building things there and everywhere around the world. It's like, why why sit back and and work hard and not take any pride or not take any risks to go to go above and beyond because we're capable of it. There's people that are already doing it. Yeah, this tells me, you know, people who are complaining, you know, in this country about jobs or what's going on with COVID, we have it way better (laughs) than people in other countries. People are committing more suicides in other countries because they don't even have food to eat. Um, To feel gratitude that you are in this country alone, I feel like um, that's what it should be, to feel grateful that you're here and not somewhere else where it's third world. Because if you haven't seen third world, trust me, it will change your life. And you'll be grateful that you have a laundromat, that you have clean water and you have the food of your choice. Because when I lived abroad, I didn't have the food of my choice. So it's a really big decision. Of course, I made it. But so um, do you want to go back to Bosnia? Are you going to go back? Is it? So I went back a few times and just like right now with uh, with COVID and everything, Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely waiting for for the borders and countries to yeah. because there's definitely plans in my mind to mm-hmm. travel around the world. And that is definitely uh, one of the spots that um, I have to go back, right? Mm-hmm. It's my home. And when I went back, I believe it was in 2012, um, just absorbing the moment of where our house was at, you know, how I used to play there as a child. Mm-hmm. And even though it brought back bad memories, you know, I, I try to take the good out of it and knowing, hey, I was born here and still able to create a life somewhere else and still have that be part of me. Right. There was nothing taken away from me far as, um, even the bad stuff. It's, it's my story. It's a part of me and just use it to grow and develop and, and keep moving. We can't go back. So we might as well go forward. Like less that it happened to us and for us. Yes, absolutely. I think it's incredible because you you're in corporate and the route you want to take is, you know, speak motivational, you know, be a motivational speaker globally. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can see you being the change for Bosnia, like the first person to step up and have that courage, you know, to speak. I I don't know the consequences of that in the country. And I know there's a lot of uh, hate 
and you know um, resistance to it. So, what are your thoughts? Like, are you are you afraid? <laughs> I'm not a, there's no fear in me. Um, I know how people. I know how people think, and that's okay. Um, yeah. Some of the things that people say, um, opinionated. Who's he talking to? Why is he talking about this stuff? Um, he's delusional. I've heard it all, and it's like. Mm. Better things to do. If you're not coming to motivate me, inspire me, or push me forward, you're going to be irrelevant. You know, it's one of those mm. things. And, and that I noticed the next generation isn't like the first generation here. The next generation, they're hungry. Um, as Les Brown says, you got to be hungry. They're really hungry, but they're more open minded. And yeah. I've had friends, and you've probably had friends or met people in your life that mm. they come to conclusions that you just ask yourself, how the heck did that person come to that conclusion? And, you know, it's a guessing game. They don't know you. Um, they think they know you. And, you know, sometimes they're they're um, uh, being critical of you, but they're not the ones paving the way. So if you're not helping, you'll have to move to the side or you know, <laughs> there's only one way for me. So and I don't get scared. I don't get intimidated. I, I don't wow. get flustered. So, um, you know, some say he's arrogant. I'm focused. So, you know, you got to know how to. <laughs> how your mental capacity works, right? Yeah, I was on the coaching call, um, you know, with my coach Michael Baptiste last night, and he was sharing, don't allow others, you know, to influence you, such as a lady had said when him and his lady were out that you guys look like you have low energy. And he's like, well, thank you for sharing that, but we have great energy today. You know what I mean? It's you don't allow them to tell you how you feel. You say, thank you for sharing that, but that's not how I feel, yep. you know? Like, because if you allow that to resonate and sit with you, you're going to start questioning yourself. Do I really feel this way? <laughs> that is true. It's, and you know how the mind works. And, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's people out there that um, they used to always say, I, I remember when I moved here. And, um, of course, you have opportunities here. Parents will tell their kids, you mm -hmm. know, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer, go make all this money. It's like if they're not passionate about it, they're going to quit, but they're going to be in debt. Why would you want want them to do that? Right. So it, it's one of those things as I, I started this journey, you know, I started working with with kids and um, and adults and really tapping into what is it that you want to spend your life on. You can improve your life drastically if you find out what your passion and what your goal is. And, wow. you know, might not be a doctor, but, you know, if you go to sales, you can make more money than a doctor if that's your goal. Um, yeah. But happiness is key. There's you can't put the value of money on that. And, you know, <laughs> you know if you help people out, if you help a lot of people out. There's incredible things that can be built on this planet and everybody's winning. I'm a winner. <laughs> you are a winner. You know, um, DJ Khaled, right? What is this saying again? Will you remind me? Do you know his saying? He just says things. But anyway, I could see myself collaborating with him like, I'm a winner. Because he's always talking about this bar of soap. Like this soap. I don't know. He does like these. Do you know what I'm talking about or no? I, I've seen him a few times. This I don't is, know which one. This is amazing. <laughs> I don't know. You said happiness is key, so that makes me happy. Share more with us. So tell us about your agriculture company and, you know, your thoughts. Uh, well, you know, it's I, I started going. Um, I finished finished my high school. And, of course, parents, you know, you got to go to college because they didn't mm -hmm. have that opportunity. And it's like, mm -hmm. You know, I'll go and I got my associates, still didn't find my passion, went for my bachelor's, didn't find my passion, you know, went for my master's. It's like <laughs> I didn't find my passion. It's like I'm memorizing. I'm passing these tests. I'm using the knowledge that I'm getting, you know, but something's tugging on my little heart. And I'm like, gosh, what 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 is it? You know, and got into a corporate <laughs> gig and, you know, love what I do and I'm great at it. And I'm like, but this isn't it. This isn't me. There's so much more in me. I'm like, I got more fuel and I'm not, I'm not using all of it. And it's like, I only get one chance at life. And it's like, I have to do what I'm passionate That's right. about. And, That's you know, right. um, started working with, as you mentioned, John Tellerico and, you know, just started taking my goals seriously. And I, and I haven't before it's like, but when I started thinking about them and the more I started thinking mm -hmm. and getting more specific, you know, redirect that mindset. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm on to something here. And I think I'm tapping into my passion and, you know, Kind of, kind of funny to say it took a long time, but you know, once I found, once I found that I, out, it was like you know, just, uh, just a blink, mm -hmm. and like, hey, now I know what I need to do. Wow. So I'm so, on Yeah. So speaking is what you want to do. You know, is that for the rest of your life? Is there some? Do you have other dreams and goals that you want to do aside from speaking? 
Um, speaking and speaking to empower is it's mm -hmm. always going to be a part of me. Um, I can wake up at three o'clock in the morning to help somebody out. And, you know, it's just I, God and I'm a true believer in God. And I, I feel like God's given people some abilities, um, mm -hmm. given some abilities to some that they haven't to others and given some abilities to others that haven't given it, given it back, you know, say to me, but always mm -hmm. willing to learn, always willing to grow up, climb myself and, and, you know, just try to help people out because we all have something we want. You know, we all mm -hmm. have a goal, even though we don't realize it. And, you know, we only get one chance at life. And, you know, like I said, the more people you help, you know, it makes me feel good as well to help people out. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like when you don't get help. Um, and, right. you know, there's nothing wrong with helping people because, you know, we all should be taking care of and helping each other. What was your transition like, you know, coming to the country, um, did you speak English? Like what were your challenges? Did you get bullied? Um, everything above and beyond, right? Uh, different wow. culture, race, ethnicity, um, different language. Of course, you know, um, we just came with the backpacks that we had or the bags that we wow. had. Um, lived in an apartment and there was a certain number of people that could live in there. So I had to hide. And I think <laughs> I said this during the summit. I was yeah, wow. hiding in the closet because I was the smallest and I could fit. Wow. Um, yeah, rebel back then, and you know, just uh, just just going to school, and sometimes you know, you didn't have different clothes that you can change every day, right? And, right, you know, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, got bullied. Um, you know, I, okay. I was never really tall. I was always short. You know, probably gonna be short till the day I die, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but, Me too. <laughs> but I didn't let that stuff. I didn't let that stuff like get to me because I know when people project that negativity, mm. it has nothing to do with you. It's their internal, wow. you know, mechanism. And I was just so focused. I'm like, I have to get this done. And, you know, because I always had my parents in the, in, in my thoughts that I will have to do whatever I have to, if I have to move the planet, that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, arrogant as it sounds, <laughs> I was good enough to do it and I did it. So. I think it's great. You accomplished a big, big dream of yours. And who taught you that mindset? Was it yourself, like self-taught, self-inspired? So my dad always worked hard, right? And yeah. in my culture, in our DNA, we're mm -hmm. hardworking people. And when I saw yeah. in the United States, working hard alone isn't going to scale you to get to the top. Sometimes you got to work smart as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, if I work hard, if I work smart, what else do I have to do? And then I started filling in my gaps. You know, I have to learn how to negotiate. I have to learn how to sell. You know, I have to I have to learn how do I set goals? How do I hit those goals? And, you know, started acquiring different things. And I didn't keep myself limited. Oh, I know this. It's like I was always willing to invest in courses and stuff to because I knew it helped me out in the long run. Right. It's like sometimes you're just so focused on money that you're not focused on growing. But we're going to go spend 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars on a car. You know, and I, I changed it. I was like, okay, if I can grow and I can develop, I can buy 10 of those cars. You know, wow. um, there happens to be a strategy, I guess, that kind of came in and I'm like, hey, this is working for me. So money, 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 money. What's spent most a lot, important? A lot, it's been a lot. <laughs> I know that. I see your <laughs> lot. I see your page. So what's most important to you at this time? Oh, my girlfriend. Gosh, she's the most ah! important thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gosh, it took me so long. I was really picky when it came to girls of what I wanted. And, <laughs> and, you know, just like I said, my culture, ah, you're too picky. You won't be able to find the right one. And it's like, mm. worry about you. Don't worry about me, you know, um, because I feel like you, if you're good and you put mm. out a good, that's what you're going to get back. Right. Aww. And, uh, yeah, she's the best, best thing that happened to me in my life. And wow. you know, I was kind of Xing out everything else that, that I've accomplished. And, you know, when I met her, she's like, Iowa, what are you doing in Iowa? And I'm like, ah, maybe one day you'll be here. And, you know, <laughs> she's in Iowa. So strategy. Wow. Look at that. And I know you always hashtag Bosnian power couple. I don't know anyone else who's Bosnian. <laughs> so I think it's really cool that you're giving power to that. Is that a trend that you're starting? Um, it is. Um, I was told not to do it. I was told by people Why? that were successful people um, that were more successful than me. Um, I guess people take offense to that, but you know, for later on, reason. Later for what on, reason? 
I have no idea. It's probably their internal, <laughs> they have their internal on, revenue, you know, but I take my girlfriend uh, the next day and I'm like, Hey, we got to take a picture and I got to put this on there because I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't live from external factors. Like I am going to do what I want to do, not what, you know, what people's opinions are, because at the end of the day, I'm living for me, right? I'm creating mm. my dream, my goal. And a lot of people and, you know, the friends that I've had, they've taken other people off the off their course and it's just because they created doubt or they were negative towards that person and i was mm. like that right i was always um i was always by myself just always doing my doing my thing and keeping my head up and you know didn't let the the outside interference uh cause a disturbance in me and you know it, and it worked out great and it's like people will think regardless you know you can be the nicest you can be mm -hmm. you know, be giving, but you're still going to have those people that for some reason doesn't justify their story or, or what they want. Jeez. That's what I got to tell them. Um, you don't like me. Bye-bye. <laughs> there you go. Peace out. Chai together is going to stand with or without you, honey. There you go. Anyway. That's, that's <laughs> mentality. You just, if you want to succeed, if you want to have that goal, you have to have that mentality. You know? <laughs> so, um, you can have friends or you can have supporters. Pick and choose. Wow. That's big. I want to go back to one thing regarding the genocide when, you know, you had those opinions from people that, hey, you're delusional about what happened. W tell me more about that because it did happen. It was real. It's kind of like, you know, with the Holocaust where people, some people still believe that was not real. Oh, you know? no, no, no. Um, people people believe that it was real. Mm -hmm. it was genocide. Sometimes it's the media. Yeah. They they try to cover things up or or not give it what it is because of the proper term or you know how the media is. Media mm -hmm. will, will take and run with whatever they can. Um, as far as the delusional stuff is, is the mm -hmm. stuff that I'm doing, right? I tell people during wow. COVID, hey, I want to launch a business and, you know, I want to be a motivational speaker. Or I say, you know, colleges teach you how to think, memorize and do these tests. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much more to life than just that because there's something called experience and college just teaches you a small fraction of it. That's right? Right. And you being in, in my group and being in the, you know, TIR with me, you know how the mind works. And it's like, Hey, there's a lot more to it. And why is it that I didn't learn this in college? Right. It's like, mm -hmm. I've had hundreds of classes and it's like, gosh, <laughs> oh my God. Teach me the, this stuff. Menser, classes you don't even need, <laughs> like required. Anyway, I shout out to the government and Sally May. Specific <laughs> fields, I totally understand. You know, I definitely want a doctor to have expertise. And, you know, of uh, I still think the on training, you know, um, is better than reading the books that are going to be, you know, old or just feeding in the system because, you know, if you have them where they're, where they're training and, you know, it's the system's built more just to feed in and take yeah. your money. That's, that's I, just the baseline of it. So I find it to be funny because I'm studying marketing and I live out the life of marketing, which I together. So when I'm doing the homework, it's so basic to me. It is a basic marketing course, but I'm getting the degree because I'm the first one in my generation to do it right. We came here as immigrants and mm -hmm. I can do it all because I'm doing it for the people who don't even have the opportunity because that's mm -hmm. what I need to do and do it for them. It's not all about you. You're not here for yourself. Like we're just flesh, you know, and we're just here in flesh and then our spirit and then we're gone. So life is just, um, I don't know. I believe it's just a moment. What do you think? <laughs> well, you're paving the way and you're doing it because you're a leader. <laughs> so, um, that I know about you. And far as the marketing stuff, um, yeah. you know, you're going to do great and, um, you're going to go above and beyond, right? You, you have the personality, you have the drive, you know what it is that you want. And, you know, just in the past six months, I've seen you grow incredibly. I know. And you six were the first months. person that I talked to, you know, and I was like, ah, this one has potential, you know? So. Yeah. But you know what I learned? It's not about seeing potential. It's about the doing, right? Knowing, doing gap we learn about. Yeah. I remember and, you were talking to me yeah. about that because I had so many things going through my head and it's like, hey, this is where That's you're That's incredible. You know what? I was... Before we even came out with the TIR Inner Circle Mentoring Program, mm -hmm. I was already there. <laughs> I want to say thank you to um, Mr. Jason Goss, Melissa Walton, Brissa Farrow, and everyone else who's tuning in. Thank you so much. Are you going to write a book, Menser? I am going to write the book. <laughs> uh, you know, that's in process. 
I'm going to have it written before the year's over. I'm going to wow. launch a clothing line. And um, there's a few more things <sighs> that, I'm, that I'm kind of working in the process. Um, <laughs> I think that's global. I'll stop at nothing. Um, it's going to take a lot of uh, resources and a lot of uh, <laughs> A lot of monies. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make it work, whatever it takes. You know. Yeah. Make sure you give me some of that money too. <laughs> uh, don't you worry. I have uh, I have some big plans coming around, and you know, those have uh, that have been good to me. I definitely don't mind uh, don't mind giving back and helping out. So. Oh, that's very kind. We stay tuned. We're, we're <laughs> All right, sure. I'll send you my address for that. <laughs> so, um, it's so funny. So, what is your parents? Uh, perspective on the work that you're doing you know they love it and it's something that mm -hmm. they just have to get used to right um mm -hmm. it, before it's you know this is a whole different realm for them and you know when i was telling them hey this is what i wanted it to do sometimes there was a disconnect um mm -hmm. or they weren't on the same page what will people think was mm -hmm. you know, always a big one in our community i don't care what they think they can think what they want it's That's right. I'm doing this for me and i they built an understanding that you know, we don't have to have our mental habits and, and our constraints that we had back home or that was populated into our mind, you know, uh, by our culture, the people that we were around, the things that we are experienced. And, you know, I told them I'm going to be free and I'm going to do what I want, you know. And of course, I don't take advantage of people and I and I yeah. do what's right. I stand behind my word. And it's like, long as you do good things out in the world, it will mm -hmm. come back to you and you have nothing to worry about. And you know, there's no better feeling than helping somebody else change their life. And I'm, I'm passionate about it and, you know, willing to go to distance. So it's, um, it's my drive. It's my passion. And, you know, I absolutely love it. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the viewers? Um, not at the moment. I got nothing else. That's pretty much me. Um, I'm what's, your, what's your C type goal? Is it going global? Um, my C type goal is two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month, but that Ooh. goal is gonna have to change or more. I think we're gonna have to up it up a little bit, you know, yeah, about um, like five hundred thousand. <laughs> we might have to up it up a, up a lot more. Um, this global mm -hmm. scale stuff is, uh, like I said, it costs a lot of monies, but money comes and goes, and I'm not good at spending it, so you know, it's okay. It's just, we it's live just one an instrument. It's just an exchange of energy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I um. Yeah. Tell everybody where they can find you and, um, you know, to have you on their platform as well. Yeah. So simply dash motivated.com is my website. Um, people can go on there and read a little bit about me, you know, schedule a consultation if they want. And, you know, I'm on Facebook and also on, um, on Instagram, simply motivated by Mensur. And, you know, I'm just out there and, and people can watch me. I'm trying to give my lives three times a week, just kind of give out, out tips and, um, resources that mm. people can use that maybe they can get unstuck, make their day better, um, give them a different perspective or whatnot, and you know, make this world a better place. Wow, I like that. Do you have any initiative to um, create a nonprofit or help with nonprofits and like homelessness? And um, I want to do that for the community, mm -hmm. and I'm actually working with um, a few other businesses. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really tailored to businesses just because. Um, um, they can bring in the volume, right? And I want to be able yeah. to to help people out. You know, there's also things that I'm doing in the side far as programs um, <laughs> because I want to help the next generation, right? So there's um, there's a potential that I'm going to be going to school as soon as everything opens up. If not, wow. um, I might be giving some trainings out for free. Um, yes, for free. Um, you know, <laughs> find schools or local communities or something that I can help out because I believe in, in doing the good and, and giving back to your community. It's a must. It's part of me. It's part of my business. And that's the way it's going to stay. So. Hmm. Wow. Very deep. What about the global aspect is going to outlive you? Do you feel like your impact will outlive you or are you going to create something that will outlive you physically? Have you thought about that? I haven't thought about that. You know, uh, I want to be able to travel and and touch people around the world, right? I want to be able to impact people around the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, if who knows, I might have a mini me running around, you know, oh. I might take over one day. I don't know yet, um, you know, and just pass down the legacy. And from them, it's not a goal. It's, you know, at that point, it'd be creating a legacy, right? A lifelong legacy. Mm. Um, Goals sometimes do shift and change, but um, only right. when they get improved, right? 
Mm-hmm. And you can always change your voice script if you want to add that in there. <laughs> there you go. Yep. That's incredible. Thank you for being on Chai Together and gracing us with your suitable presence with your suit on. <laughs> hey, thank you. It's, um, I don't know. There's just a part of me that um, I'm real comfortable in it. Um, I've always, yeah. and it might be the corporate thing that's in me, you know, but um, I just think it goes a lot better when I have one of these in my hands, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, um, Cheers, my friend. You know, the very cool. Cool. Be cool so, too. Yeah, just appreciate you having me. Appreciate all the viewers that tuned in. and Yeah, and, um, lots of viewers. Blessed and honored, so. Oh, namaste. Namaste, man, sir. So thank you so much. Um, you just, uh, that looks so funny. <laughs> you, you, you caught me off guard because I just remember as I was talking before, um, yeah. you, were, you were the first TIR um, person that I talked to, first friend I made. And, Aww. you know, that's just one of those things, small things like that, they go a distance, especially with me. And it's, it's something that um, I don't forget and I definitely don't take lightly. So thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, thank you.